Every summer, Wisconsin's Lake Michigan beaches draw visitors from across the state and around the world. For many, the lake's beaches and endless views are as beautiful and compelling as a visit to the ocean. But in the last few years, many Lake Michigan beaches have become fouled with piles of rotting algae. It looks like sludge to me, but it, I'm not sure what it is. It might see it a little more inviting to be able to take a dip every once in a while. Yeah, it smells like poop. When it decomposes, the algae gives off a repulsive stench. I thought it smelled like raw sewage. It's pretty dramatic, I thought. Oh, here we can see a bunch of loose stuff washing up on the beach. There's a nice mat of it here. Dr. Harvey Bootsma is working to figure out what's causing the problem and what might be done about it. This is still reasonably green. Once it starts rotting, it turns more into a brown color and uh, kind of looks and smells like cow manure. And uh, it can travel pretty far. You can be a mile or two inland and still get a pretty st strong smell coming off of the beach. Bootsma is a biologist at the Great Lakes Water Institute in Milwaukee. At Bradford Beach, just north of downtown Milwaukee, he describes some of the problems the algae causes. And you can also see how this stuff coming up into a water intake, either for a municipal water supply or for a, a cooling supply for an industry, this stuff causes real havoc when it gets into the pipes of those cooling systems. So there's, there's health problems associated with this and there's uh, economic problems as well. The name of the nuisance algae is Clodophora. It's a native species in the Great Lakes. It's part of the natural food web and it provides shelter for small fish and other organisms. Since about 2002, however, its growth has increased dramatically. In mid to late summer, much of it breaks loose and washes ashore. Excessive algae growth also plagued Lake Michigan in the 1960s and 70s. The cause then was relatively simple. There was too much phosphorus in the water. The causes today are more complicated. The effects of phosphorus appear to be compounded by invasive zebra and quagga mussels. It's a powerful example of how exotic species can restructure the ecosystems they invade. And it shows all too clearly that what we do on the land affects what we see in the water. Indeed, reducing phosphorus in runoff from the land may offer the best hope of addressing the problem. The ugly, smelly algae affects those who live on the lake more than most. A few years ago, Carol Kafarnas built a house on the lake. It's in Cleveland, Wisconsin, a small town between Manitowoc and Sheboygan. This is not natural. I've never seen anything like this. Kofarnas and her neighbor, Phil Weimerslag, say the amount of algae along the beach changes from day to day and week to week. Well, two weeks ago it was probably, what, 30 feet out? Yeah. 30 feet. Yeah. This, yeah. this is nothing. Yeah, that's what I said. On a scale of 10, this is like maybe two or three. Yeah. If you were to ask me, if I knew now, what, you know, I would not have built it. I would not have. <laughs> My wife's been here her whole life. And she's just disgusted with this. Local resident Buck Karanen says people are shocked when they visit the public beach at nearby Haika Bay. And you see people come down here and go, what happened to this lake, you know? And it's just, it's just nasty. Like I got an underwater camera when I put it down. It, it used to be so pretty. You go out there and you look and you'd see all these rocks and you'd see stones and gravel and fish. And you put it down, it's just big green slimy mass. You don't see any colored rocks. You don't see anything anymore. Sometimes it's kind of questionable you get stuck in there. You try to back your trailer and you're stuck. You can't stay on the top. You do sink through. And you sink through. The stench is just even worse than what it is for standing up on the pier there. Russ Tooley also lives near Haika Bay. Algae there can form mats several feet thick, making it almost impossible to launch a boat. That's what this Haika Bay facility is for, 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 for boat launching, and it's black now because it is all rotted. It makes the same kind of stench as what you'd get from a manure pile. The problem is particularly severe at Haika Bay. 
but significant amounts show up along much of Lake Michigan's western shore. The impacts of today's problem extend beyond the algae's nasty look and smell. It can be a major expense for power plants that draw water from Lake Michigan for cooling. Tony Bernier is the station manager of Wee Energy's Port Washington power plant. These are our circulating water pumps. These two large pumps supply all the water to cool that steam condenser down. The plant has been forced to install elaborate equipment to keep its cooling system free of the algae, or moss as some call it. That's what these are. They're six traveling water screens that rotate continuously and then if that all fails, then we add city water for 3,000 gallons a minute of city water to try to keep the moss out of the plant. Technically, it's an algae rather than a moss, but it's trouble in any case. Several times a year, Cladophora completely shuts down the plant. Lately, these forced shutdowns have cost the plant more than a half million dollars each year. When we have moss problems, it no longer condenses the steam and the steam turbine goes out of service. Over the last decade, We Energies has spent more than $5 million on equipment to reduce forced shutdowns sometimes caused by Cladophora. Ultimately, homeowners, businesses, and other electricity customers throughout Wisconsin and beyond must pay these bills. Yet another problem with Cladophora is that it might promote the growth of harmful bacteria on the beaches and in the water. The algae just provide a nutrient-rich medium for the bacteria to grow and multiply. One of these bacteria is E. coli. E. coli bacteria have been used as an indicator bacteria for fecal contamination, and beach managers measure the number of E. coli bacteria in the water and in the beach sand uh, as a uh, indicator of whether they should post an advisory or even close the beach. The source of the bacteria may be from seagulls that that land on the algae beds and feed there because there are mussels and other small crustaceans in the algae that wash ashore. Or it might be uh, present from runoff, nearby urban or, or agricultural runoff. Residents in Centerville, near Cleveland, Wisconsin, are concerned about E. coli and Cladophora. They formed a group called Centerville Cares. The group works to raise awareness of the problem some members, like Garth Hammond, have learned to take their own measurements of E. coli. We took some water samples and went up to the University of Wisconsin and Stevens Point and got educated a little bit. These are the results of water samples that we've done this year. And you can see that there are big numbers all over. Some of the beaches are so contaminated with E. coli that nobody wants to be there. I don't know that we saved anybody's lives but we do have a record how bad it is. The group also monitors a nearby stream that may contribute to the area's algae problem. We're monitoring the water here in Point Creek because we have concerns that there's too much phosphorus in that water and the phosphorus in that water ends up in Lake Michigan which is only a mile downstream from here. And it's the phosphorus that we've learned which is really the motor or the engine that causes the excess cladophora in the lake. Scientists like Bootsma say the distribution of phosphorus in the lake is one of several important changes made by zebra mussels. 